What's up, everybody? Welcome to Appreciating Comic Book Art. Uh, this is a, a Mark Silvestri book, a sketchbook that I picked up in 2006 <clears throat> at Wizard World, back when Wizard World was still pretty decent. You know, you still had Artist Alley, and you still had um, a lot of big names coming. Uh, I think this was probably the second Wizard World I ever went to. But I ended up buying this. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of Sylvester. And at that time, I was just starting to get into him influencing my work quite a bit. So to see this sketchbook, I really, really wanted to jump into it. Um, it's got a nice little, you know, greeting or whatever you want to say. Uh, you know, I, I actually haven't, haven't read that in a while. I'm not sure exactly what it says. Um, I'm sure if you pause it, zoom in. Here, I'll do this. If you want to pause it, there you go. You go ahead and pause it, and you read the whole thing. There we go. All right, cool. Moving on. <clears throat> yeah, just some really uh, beautiful pencils. Yeah, it's Mark Silvestri. You know, what can I say about it? Dude is an absolute master genius at, at illustration. Uh, his style has evolved over the years. You know, he's, he's brought in a lot of, uh, you know, he's brought in some Bernie Wright, 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 Bernie Wrightson, thank you, I can't, I can't talk, I can, I can never talk, that's just, that is what it is, and I, I've come to realize that in life, but he's brought in a lot of other guys' styles into his work, you know, after he moved through the 90s, where self, admittedly, he was more Jim Lee aspect, you know, because you, guys were doing what was popular in the 90s. Uh, and Jim Lee, you know, he was the king in the 90s. People were buying all of his stuff. And Mark Silvestri saw what was what was popular, what he was doing, and, and he went with that. Uh, but then he kind of, he got out of there, he started doing his own thing a little bit more. And we're all the beneficiaries of that, because the dude's imagination is just second to none. I mean, this, this cave woman witchblade there, just great. I love how you incorporate the water. But you don't have to draw lots. Of, I mean, there's detail in the water. You might not be able to see as much. Let's see. There we go. You can see he's got detail in the water. But you just see how the guys just, they disappear into it. You know, and that can all be, obviously it was the cover of the book. Well, I guess it's blown up, so you can't really see the rest. But, you know, the rest of it can be brought out in color. Same thing with here. You know, like there's not a lot of detail in the back. It's just kind of like line work. But the colors will bring that out. And it'll, it'll make it look really awesome. Plus it makes all the shadow... And all the rendering in the foreground, that much more uh, ability to pop out. So just genius. Army of Darkness, of course, I'm a huge fan of Army of Darkness, the movie. This, so to see this cover they did for Dynamite, uh, maybe it was a pinup, I don't know. Is it a cover? Yeah, it's a cover. Army of Darkness cover is awesome. I'd love them to put out like a direct director's cut edition of the movie and have this be the cover to the movie. I think that would be the shit. See, uh, what was that? The Image United book they did. Eric Larson did the layouts to that. So he shows the layouts that Larson did. And then down here you see the Witchblade that he actually drew that would go go in there. It's pretty cool. You got uh, Cyber Force number seven. And <sighs> awesome. That's all I can say. Just beautiful work. Oh, there's my dog wanting to come in. I'll have to, she'll have to wait a second. Yeah, beautiful work. Beautiful work. Absolutely love, love this stuff. Seeing the the raw pencils uh, without any inks, you know, just, you know, you get to see the energy of everything that he does. It's just <sighs> unbelievable. So lifelike. Some great darkness right there. I mean, if you, if you Google the darkness, this is one of the images that always pops up. So good. The, I mean... Here we go. What is this? Is that Times Square? Yeah, I believe that's Times Square. I mean, look at all the detail there to draw in that. I mean, that's, that's just crazy. I don't have the time or the patience to want to do that. And then to get the reflection in the rain with the shadow. I mean, it's just captured it. It's just impressive. It's inspiring. Inspiring as an artist of where you are now. Speaking of myself to where I would like to be, you know, just looking at stuff like this. <clears throat> this Ghost Rider, I don't know if anyone saw the colored version of this, 
but I wish I owned it. Uh, I've never been able to find the issue. I've only ever seen the image on online, but it's just, I would, I would kill to have this book because the color version is awesome. But just seeing the pencils, man, I just, I get extremely jealous, extremely jealous every time I look through, look at Mark Silvestri's work. Got a cool cover there to Tony Daniels' Humankind. On the side here, we got some Hunter's Killers, uh, issue six, uh, progress shots. So that's, that's pretty cool. You can kind of see the breakdown there of the page come together. That's pretty awesome. So it looks like, I mean, I would assume he probably draws this. Well, I don't know. It looks like he drew that, messed around with the lighting, and then probably lightboxed it here to finish it out. Some guys do the, the like thumbnail pencils and then blow it up. And that might have been the case here. Uh, some guys go right to the paper, like Jim Lee just goes right to the paper, which I'm kind of split. I'll do that. I'll go right to the paper sometimes. Um, sometimes I'll do a, a pencil sketch and then blow it up. Whatever I feel at the time. What, however the page is coming together, I guess. Great portrait, self-portrait by Mark Silvestri. I can't draw in a realistic you know, portrait like this. And I wish I could because I love the shading techniques and how how a portrait aspect of drawing uh, real life people uh, comes through. Uh, I, I wish I had that skill. Um, I know a lot of the guys, a lot of the image guys could do that. Uh, Rob Liefeld is really good at it too if you've seen some of the portraits of uh, actors or whoever he's done uh, in the past. This... Uh, <clears throat> this Dracula cover, this is another one you can find online that just pops right up. This is one of the, and I said this before, before I was like really, really into Sylvester, this was the, this was the drawing that really kind of got me in. I saw this one day and I was just blown away. There is nobody that does fabric like he does. It's such a stylistic way of doing it, of how it falls, of how it, how it creases. And it's just... There's something very attractive to the eye. That's you know, any artist I like, you have to attract my eye. You have to make me want to just look at your work, you know, nonstop. You know, that's that's the that's what good artists can do. That's why I I push back so much on some of the art you see nowadays in, in like the big two or whatever. Nothing against those artists. You know, they've got a job to do. They're doing their thing, but it's, it's not the style. You know, I like to see stuff that gives me. Uh, a headache to look at in, in an aspect that I like to just you look at it and you're always finding something new let's say for instance this sentinel from his new x-men run which by the way I think is some of Sylvester's best work inked by Joe Weems I think Matt Banning inks a little bit in there as well but the x-men the new x-men run he did is just some of my favorite he was just killing it killing it on those um was it four issues five issues I can't remember you see the detail in the Sentinel's arms, and, you know, the, the mechanical workings behind the scenes, just, just simply amazing, simply amazing. I had some uh, concepts for some movies that he was working on, or I don't know if he was working on the storyboards or whatever, I mean, but uh, that's pretty cool, too. Again, you know, like, the imagination, I love stuff like this, you know, it's, you don't have a, just a solid plane, you, you, you this entire picture exists within uh you know, see how everything's just kind of falling this is just built up it's falling you know but you get a sense of everything's you know caving in around this guy it, it's it's intense right and the way that the picture is drawn it, it adds to that i don't know what this movie was going to be about it says here's another concept sketch for the same movie monsters are like potato chips for me i can never draw them just once yeah i mean i get that so this was from a, pro a movie project that featured a guy stuck between heaven and hell. It's fun sometimes to draw stuff that makes no real world sense. There you go. And that is the thing that's cool about comics in general is drawing stuff that makes no real world sense. Because it's a comic book, man. It's a comic book. It's not supposed to be real world. Uh, again, this is great examples of just how you draw. Uh, it's not going to... All right, that's not going to pick up the... But you can kind of see. Let me, let me see if I can zoom in here. Because this is... Let's see. 
skewed up in here. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But you can just see just a master at, at drawing the folds and making it look cool. I don't think there's anybody better at it, honestly. Awesome Witchblade, again. Gotta have that. There's a cover for Wanted. Great work. Oh, shit, let me put this back. There we go. I don't know who, rem who remembers this, but this was a cover uh, for a Wizard magazine of Cyberforce. I remember this specifically. It looked great. A fold-out cover. <clears throat> Yeah, just this is great. I I love sketchbooks. I've got another one of Sylvester's sketchbooks, but I I think that this one this one is the better one. I like this one a lot compared to what what's in the other one. Just a lot a lot more interesting things to look at. And this was this was pretty cool too. I got some drawings here painted by Nathan Cabrera. So you got a cool a cool look of Sylvester's work painted. And then uh, just a little wrap up at the end. It says, "Imagination is a terrible thing to waste. We all all have it, and the world might be a better place if we all used it. So get busy, Mark Silvestri." Yeah, and I agree. Agree a thousand, a thousand percent. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me. If you like this video, please subscribe, hit the like button for, you know, because I like it. Bells for notifications, share it around. I really, really appreciate everything. Thank you for checking this out, and uh, I will see you all Tuesday for issue or episode three of our deep dive into the entire series of pit and uh, maybe we'll have some uh fun special guests on so all right guys until then take care talk to you later peace